Hallelujah, hallelujah. What is it going to be like when we see Jesus Christ face to face? And he takes his celestial handkerchief and he dries every tear from our eye and we never cry again. And he takes every heartache out of our heart and we never suffer again. Hallelujah. Praise God. I wouldn't trade this for all the tea in China. I wouldn't trade this for all the gold in Africa. I wouldn't trade this for all the diamonds in South America. It's all right. Give him some praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Get your Bibles quickly. I know the hour is moving on, and I will try to be Aware of the time, get your Bibles turned to the 11th chapter of Hebrews. A very familiar and famous portion of Scripture. By the way, next Sunday, my brother Dan Davis, pastor from Baton Rouge, will be preaching. So um, you'll get a Davis back to back. Different Davis, different Sundays, but my brother will be preaching for us next Sunday, pastor from Baton Rouge. I don't often read long text, scripture texts, before I preach, but today I just feel like we need to take five or six minutes and read the word of the Lord. We allude to this chapter frequently in our preaching, our teaching, and even in our discussions among ourselves, but uh, not always do we take the time to read the entire chapter. It is 40 verses. It won't take forever. It might just seem like that, but it won't take forever. We need to hear what faith, I said what faith is going to do for us. Do I have some people of faith in the building this afternoon? No, 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 no. I didn't say, do I have people who love God? I said, do I have some people of faith? No, 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 no. I didn't even say, do I have people who have the Holy Ghost? I said, do I have people who have faith? You see, you don't know if you have faith until faith is tested. You can dance and you can shout and you can proclaim all the theoretical promises of God that you want. But when the enemy comes in like a flood and things look dark and there is no answer and there is no doctor and there is no lawyer and there is no friend. Do I have people who still have faith? Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Faith in God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost in this house today. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 
Now faith, everybody say, now faith, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which were, are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that half-heartedly, occasionally. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles or tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city. He looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded. They died in faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and they were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned but now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and that he had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, <clears throat> both the sons of Joseph, and worshiped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God 
than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king. For he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood. Lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. Which the Egyptians as saying to do were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. And when she had received the spies with peace, and what shall I more say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith, everybody say through faith, subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured not accepting deliverance that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. They didn't receive all the promises of God, but they held on to their faith. And I have news for those precious saints of the Old Testament. Their faith was not in vain because everything that God promised them, He is still going to give them because God through us has provided some better thing for the kingdom of God. Finally, I want to read in 1 Peter chapter 1. I know this is longer than I usually read. I think it's all right. I agree 100%. It's the Word of God. If that's all you take home today, that's enough. If that's all you remember today, that's enough. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. That's talking about us, the church. We are kept by the power of God. How? Pardon my voice. How? Through faith. Did you hear what I said? We are kept today by the power of God through faith, just as they in the Old Testament were kept by the power of God through faith, ready to be revealed in the last time. I don't have time to preach it today, but God is getting ready to reveal His church to the world. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire. I'm talking about your faith now. Your faith is more precious than gold. I'm not talking about the promises of God. Your faith is more precious than gold. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the, the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable 
and full of glory. And here it is. Receiving the end of your faith. Everybody say the end of your faith. Receiving the end of your faith. After a while, it'll all be over. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. If you have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ this afternoon, put your Bibles down and give him a standing ovation. God bless you. You may be seated in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The end of your faith. The end of your faith. There's the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. The Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. The Cowboy Hall of Fame in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. But the Faith Hall of Fame is found in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. The 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews lists 17 examples of how faith was put into operation in the lives of the saints of God throughout biblical history. These were not people who skipped merrily through life without problems. These were not individuals who simply whistled in the dark, singing silly little songs about faith and about trusting God. No, these were people who persevered in their faith in spite of serious opposition, in spite of setbacks, in spite of problems, in spite of all the things that life could throw against them. They persevered in their faith. They experienced great suffering. They experienced severe problems. But they also experienced great miracles. A little while ago, we were singing, after a while, it'll all be over. Just a little while to stay here. Yes, I've got it, everlasting life. And I watched as people began to worship and praise the Lord. And by the looks on their faces... And by the expressions that they had, and by the lightness of their step, and the joy in their, their per per person as they worship God, you would have thought that they did not have a care in the world. But I was watching people worship the Lord who've been told they have cancer. I was watching people worship the Lord who've been told there is a disease in their body. I was watching people worship the Lord who have are facing terrible pro problems and trials in their life. But what they did, what they did was through faith, they lifted up the name of Jesus Christ. And by their dance, they proclaim their faith in God. By their smile, they proclaim their faith in God. By their joy, they proclaim their faith in God. You see, don't make fun of my worship because you don't know what it costs. My worship may be awkward. But it's costly. 
You know what we were doing here? Yes, we were worshiping, but we were breaking alabaster boxes all along this altar here. We were breaking alabaster boxes of precious ointment and pouring it out before the Lord. It cost us something to worship, but we've made the decision that through faith we are going to persevere in our relationship with God. If we, the last generation Christians, should be strong in anything, it must be our faith. Because without faith, we can't stand. Without faith, we cannot inherit the promises of God. Without faith, we cannot be saved. Without faith, we cannot be justified. Without faith, we cannot please God. Faith is both the beginning and the culmination of our walk on this earth with God. He that cometh to God must first believe that he is. It begins with faith. It begins with believing. But I want you to know something. Every day when you get out of your bed and you start walking with Jesus Christ, it's a walk of faith. For the just shall live by faith. It's not just something we start in. It's something we walk in. It's something we live in. It's something we breathe. It's something we experience every day of our life. We live. We move. We have our being in Jesus Christ. In the faith that he has given to us. But what I want you to understand. Is that there is also coming. An end of our faith. A culmination. A reward, if you will, for our faith. I love that chapter in the book of Hebrews that talks about all the great things God did for those people. And you understand that God did give them a land. God did give them promises. God, God did give them victories. God did perform miracles for them. Many powerful and wonderful, dramatic miracles took place. But the full end result of their faith was not yet revealed because there was another people that had to come. A people who would know God, not just through law, but a people who would know him through the baptism of the Holy Ghost, through a greater dispensation of power and anointing. And though they had the law and the promises of God, by what God has given us, we make them complete. And there is coming an end. We started this thing in faith. And we're going to end this thing in faith. Our relationship starts, it concludes with faith. Martin Luther said, faith sees the invisible, believes the incredible, and receives the impossible. Then it accepts impossible, does with the indispensable, and bears the intolerable. For every child of God, faith must be a present reality. The first verse of Hebrews chapter 11 says, now faith is everybody say that with me now faith is it does not say faith was nor does it say faith shall be it says now faith is faith is rooted in the past faith shapes the future but faith must live in the present it must thrive in the present moments we have to have now faith faith for this moment Hallelujah. In John chapter 11, we read of Lazarus, the friend of Jesus. Lazarus is sick, and his sisters send word for Jesus to come. And Jesus deliberately delays his arrival. And while Jesus delays his arrival, Lazarus dies. Not only does Lazarus die, but he's dead for four days. And when Jesus finally arrives in Bethesda, when he finally gets there, Martha says to Jesus, Jesus, if only 
you had been here. She uses the past tense because she has great faith for the past. She says, Jesus, if only you had been here, our brother would not have died. Jesus tells her, Lazarus shall live again. And Mary, Martha says, yes, Lord, I know that he shall live in the resurrection and he shall live in the last day. She speaks to the future. She has faith for the future. But Jesus looks at Martha and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. He does not say I was the resurrection. He does not say I shall be the resurrection. He says I am the resurrection and the life. Right now, this moment, in your situation, in your problem, in your circumstance, the I am is there to bring life to your dead circumstance. Give the Lord some praise. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Not I was or I shall be, but I am at this moment, this very moment in time. Jesus is teaching a powerful principle here that we must have present faith. Faith that lives in the present moment. Our bishop preached a powerful message. It was quite a masterpiece years ago based upon the first few words of the verse, the first verse of Hebrews 11. He said, now faith, and that was the title of his message. Not tomorrow faith, not next month faith, not next year faith, not last year faith, or last Sunday faith, but now faith, faith for this moment, faith for this present time. Because we need to understand that God who exists outside of time. He's not confined to time. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, I'm not real big on sports. Some people are, you know. That's fine if you like sports. That's cool. You know, some of you like to stay up with the Yankees. My wife likes the Yankees. Go figure. I think maybe it's just the Yankees, the players. I don't know if she actually likes the game. <laughs> I hope it's the game that she likes. <laughs> she can straighten me out on that later. You know, maybe you like sports, but here's the thing. You know, w one time we were having a, a prayer and fasting, and, and it was during the Super Bowl. And somebody said, oh... We're going to miss the Super Bowl because we're praying and fasting and we're, we're, we're fasting from electronic media and we won't get to see the Super Bowl. So they had someone tape it for them. And they said, don't you dare tell me how it came out. I don't want to know. I want to watch the game myself. I want to see it myself. I don't want somebody to tell me what happened because it ruins the game. But you know what? Geraldine, I'm tired. I'm coming to sit by you. Move that cell phone. <laughs> if I know how the game is going to turn out, if I know the score at the end of the game, I don't lose my mind when somebody strikes out in the second inning. I don't lose my mind when we're behind in the third inning. I don't get upset when somebody fumbles the ball and, 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 and makes an error, you know, in the game because I already know what's going to happen at the end. I know the end of my faith. I know the end of my consecration and trust in Jesus Christ. I serve a God who cannot lie. I serve a God who has never failed on one of his promises. I read the back of the book, and we win. Oh, pastor, things are bad on the political scene. I don't care. We win. Oh, pastor, I don't think we're going to have a good president. I don't care. We win. 
Oh, pastor, things are bad in Russia. Things are bad in the economy. Things are bad on the world stage. I don't care. We win. That's why I can have faith for right now. That's why I can. God looked at Abraham, who didn't have any children, and said, I've made you a father of many nations. Listen to God's verbiage. He did not say, I will make you a father. He said, I have made you the father of many nations. But the Lord, I don't, Lord, I don't even have a son. I don't have one. I've made you. God looked at the children of Israel as they marched around Jericho. And he said, shout for, I have given you the city. Not I will give you the city. I have given you the city. The point is, we got to get out of our little fixation on the moment. A little obsession with what's wrong right now. Our little, our little focus on the things that are going wrong in our life right now that sap our energy, sap our joy, sap our faith, sap our effectiveness in the kingdom. Because we're so focused on something not right and something that's going wrong. And I don't know how, you know what? Give it to God. Put it in the hands of the Lord and begin to rejoice. Shout now, because God has given you the city. Shout now, because God has made you the father or the mother of many nations. Shout now, because God has given. I want somebody to lift their hands right now and begin to thank God for something that you're asking God. I don't want you to ask him. I want you to thank him that it's already done. I want you to thank him that it's already done. Jesus, I stand on your word right now. I proclaim in faith, according to your word, the answer is already done. The miracle has already occurred. You have already answered my prayer. You have already taken care of my situation. Now shout, shout now, for God has given you the victory. The walls are starting to crumble. The walls are starting to come down. Praise precedes the promise. Praise precedes the miracle. Praise precedes the answer. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. God has already done it for you. Your children are going to be saved. Your family is going to return to the Lord. That miracle is going to take place for you. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now you've proclaimed your faith. Now you've declared the promises of God as already in existence. But there's something more to be done. God doesn't just expect us to speak our faith. He expects us to live our faith. Noah had faith that it was going to rain. But he had to live his faith by building an ark. David had faith that God would slay Goliath. But he had to walk out on the field by himself and take his slingshot and his stones. Joshua had faith. That God would give him the city, but he had to take up his sword and, fa and fight. Peter had faith that Jesus would allow him to walk on the water, but he had to get up and get out of the boat. You see, God always works in relationship, in partnership with his people. 
Whenever God gives you a promise, you can be assured that your faith will be tested concerning that promise. It always happens. Mark it down. When God gives a promise, there's a testing, a proving time when we have to live out the promises of God. And God watches us to see how we live out and demonstrate our faith when it looks like the promise is not coming to pass. Now, we can try to work it out ourselves. Just ask Sarah. She said, you know, God gave us a promise. It's not happening. We're waiting years. Abraham and I aren't getting younger, that's for sure. We're getting older as the years pass. I love the Lord. He's given us a promise. Why don't I just help God out? We are still suffering today. The consequences of Sarah's bad decision. God doesn't need your help, but he wants your cooperation. He wants your partnership. You don't have to engineer a plan and help God out. God has a plan. All you have to do is get in touch with God's plan and cooperate with him. You see, because it all comes down to dominion and authority. It comes down to a dominion and authority. If you live in Ozone Park, you don't have the right to tell the residents of Hicksville what to do. I'm talking now about township governments. If you're a resident of New Jersey... You can't walk into town hall in Huntington and tell them you want them to put a stop sign up in front of your house. They'll ask you, what's your address? And as soon as you say, Hoboken, <laughs> they're going to show you to the door. They're going to say, sir, ma'am, I'm sorry you're confused. This is not Hoboken. This is not New Jersey. This is Huntington. Why? Because you need to be a resident to have the right to govern in local affairs. Now the Bible reveals that heaven is God's domain and the earth is Satan's domain. Now, before you get all up in arms, I just want to let you know something. When Satan was cast out of the heavens, he fell to earth. He usurped the authority and control over the earthly reign of men because he enticed men to join in his rebellion. Until he got the cooperation of humankind, he did not have dominion on this earth. But once he got the cooperation of mankind, he usurped the authority and established a false government on this earth. Now, twice in Scripture, Jesus called Satan the prince of the world. Satan is the pretender. He illegally exercises authority in the affairs of men. Now, God could override Satan's insurrection, but God, who is righteous, does everything according to righteous protocol. Satan watches his false government. He watches his worldly domain closely to see what God is doing. And if Satan sees God beginning to work in a situation, Satan rushes in to challenge God and say, you can't work in my territory. This is earth. This is my domain. Go back to your own domain. But for the child of God, God replies, Satan, first of all, I can come here if I want to because I created this world. And secondly, Satan, I'm working here on this earth because somebody on earth has asked me to come. Satan, 
Somebody in your neighborhood has called on me. Somebody in your zip code has fallen on their knees and is praying. Somebody in your own territory is asking for heaven to come down and to take control of the situation. That's why Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Hallelujah. God is getting ready to do something awesome in this house today. He's getting ready to do something awesome in this house today. You see, when you begin, God spoke to me a few years ago, a number of years ago, and told me. He didn't call me pastor. He didn't call me Brother Davis. He called me Doug. He said, if you will... Get on your knees and do spiritual warfare in the heavens. If you will reach from the earth and do warfare in the heavens through prayer and supplication, I will come down from heaven into your worldly domain and I will work in the earthly domain and do things that you cannot do. He says, if you will fight the spiritual war in the heavens, I will fight the natural war on the earth for you. We get too caught up. We get, get too caught up trying to fight our own battles. We get too caught up trying to do, to do let me tell you something. Faith having faith in God. You see, you know what happened here just a few moments ago? Hell had a heart attack. <laughs> because there were people who were dancing here that all week long, hell has thrown things at them. All week long, hell has tormented them. I'm not saying that they're depressed or discouraged. I'm just saying that it's one piece of bad news after the other. One setback after the other. One closed door after the other. One apparent prayer that's not answered after another. And it seems like no matter which way they turn, it's a problem. It's an obstacle. It's a hindrance. It seems like nothing is happening. And hell said, we took care of that. We stopped them. But about 25 minutes ago, the sirens went off in hell because those very people whose hell thought they had defeated, those very people who hell thought they had stopped were up here in the aisle worshiping and praising God and demonstrating their faith, living out their faith, manifesting their faith. And when they did that, heaven came down. Heaven came down and began to work in their situation. Angels were dispatched to their homes. Angels were dispatched to their jobs. Angels were dispatched into their situations. Somebody needs to give him some praise right now. There's an angel working for you right now. There's a mighty warrior fighting a battle on your behalf right now. You can't fight the fight, but you can lift up Jesus in praise and worship and demonstrate your faith. And in doing so, you empower the angels to work on your behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm speaking prophetically right now. Somebody's going to call me this week and say, Pastor, when I got home from church Sunday, the situation had changed. Pastor, when I came from church Sunday, something had happened. Something had changed. There had been a change in my situation. Heaven touched my circumstances.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a key that we read a few moments ago in the scripture in Hebrews 11. It said this. For they were fully persuaded. Fully persuaded. There was no doubt. There's no shadow of fear or doubt. They were fully persuaded that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. But it doesn't look like it, but they were fully persuaded. But the answer hasn't come, but they're fully persuaded. But you just got more bad news, but I'm fully persuaded. <laughs> Devil, you can't stop me because I know the end of my faith. I know the end of my faith. Right now, I'm in the trial of my faith. Right now, I'm in the struggle of my faith. Right now, I'm in the testing of my faith. Right now, I'm in the proving of my faith. But I am fully persuaded. Not because of the testing, the proving, the struggle, or the trial. But because I know the end of my faith. I know the end of my faith. I know what God is going to do for me at the end. I know what is going to happen. God's promises have never failed. God's promises will never fail. And let me tell you something this afternoon. God's promises are not at the mercy of other people. God's promises are not at the mercy of your circumstances. God's promises are not at the mercy of the devil. Devil, it's going to happen and you can't stop it. My victory is coming, devil, and you can't stop it. Revival is coming, and you can't stop it. Truth shall prevail, and you can't stop it. <laughs> I started in faith. I'm walking in faith, and I'm going to end in faith. <laughs> the scripture says, cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which means trust or faith, for it has great recompense of reward. Oh, my beloved Bethel. If I could just transport us for five seconds, if I could transport us for five seconds to the pearly gates and let you watch as the people of God walk through those gates to the eternal reward of glory, I wouldn't have a job. Because you wouldn't need a pastor. All you would need is someone to just worship with. Because just to see it for a moment in time, I don't care what's happening at work, it's going to be okay. I don't care what's happening at school, it's going to be all right. Because I know that my God is going to take care of me in the end. And just to walk through those gates into the present. Ye shall receive the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Praise God. Am I the only one that's looking forward to the end of my faith? Let me just start playing it, start just building the feel of it. Oh. When I was a young kid growing up in the church, they would sing, this world is not my home. I'm only passing through. Maybe we should do that one. I sang it, but I didn't mean it because I wanted to grow up and I wanted to learn how to drive a car and I wanted to get a girlfriend and I wanted to get married. 
and I wanted to have a house and I wanted to have kids and I wanted to I didn't want to not serve Jesus but I wanted to see what life had to offer okay you can have my car you can have my stinking house it doesn't stink the only reason it stinks is because I have to do something to it every single week of my life the windows need washing, the door needs repairing, the pool needs vacuuming, the lawn needs mowing. I hope they have good lawn maintenance in heaven. I'm thankful for my house, but it's a pain. I, I'm thankful for my car, but I don't really care. You know what? Now when I sing... Oh, but I will say this. Let me give a caveat there. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm not taking my car with me to heaven. I'm not taking my house with me to heaven. But I'm taking my wife with me to heaven. So that's different. Or maybe she's taking me. I'm not sure which it is. It could be. But I'll tell you this, well, now when I sing it, this world is not my home. I mean it from way down deep inside here. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels are beckoning me. From heaven's open door. And I can't. I said I can't. I just can't feel at home. No, 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 no. In this world. In this world. Anymore I don't belong down here I belong up there I'm not a citizen down here I'm a citizen up there I'm not looking for what's down here I'm looking for what's up there Because I know the end of my faith I know the end of my faith Okay, I'm going to shut this down. Keep going, keep going. You know what we were doing a few moments ago? We're practicing. Walking on streets of gold. We're practicing, dancing on streets of gold. Because I know the end of my faith. I know the end of my faith. From heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home. If that's the way you feel, let's sing it. Oh, Lord. 